I want to welcome to the program Sheriff David Clark from Milwaukee County, Wisconsin. Sheriff, thank you for your time, sir. Tim, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's good talking to you again. And, uh, you know, last week we covered the uh, the story of Andy Kachansky, uh, the owner of the uh, Concertina Bar and uh, the Concertina Beer Hall. Second time this guy has had to deal with armed robberies uh, at his establishment. Uh, and this uh, retired firefighter is an armed citizen. Uh, what, what, what happened when these three uh, would-be robbers went into his establishment, Sheriff? Well, it's a scene that it's playing itself out uh, too often here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, the, the city park anyway, um, with crime and violence. Three individuals came in, uh, two of them armed. They announced a holdup. Uh, I say came in, came into the tavern. There were patrons on the scene at the time. And uh, Andy Kachansky, who was the owner of the establishment, uh, had a rude awakening for them. And in an act that was nothing short of courageous, uh, he fired a shot at one of the would-be robbers and uh, killed him on the spot. The other two uh, chickens fled from the scene, and uh, one has been since taken into custody and charged in that incident, and another one is still at large. Um, now, I understand that uh, prosecutors have, have said they're not going to be charging Mr. Kachansky because he acted in uh, self-defense, but uh, at least as of uh, yesterday, Mr. Kachansky had not yet received his firearm back. Right, and I uh, uh, took that issue up at the event yesterday. It's something that uh, the Milwaukee Police Department, the city of Milwaukee Police, I'm the sheriff of Milwaukee County, Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office, but the Milwaukee Police Department uh, has kind of had a history of uh, dragging their feet when it comes to returning firearms back to uh, law-abiding citizens uh, in these instances. And uh, I just, I'm going to propose uh, to our legislature uh, as a matter of fact, we're making those letters out today. We've contacted two friends on the uh, Wisconsin State Legislature, and we're going to ask for them to include an amendment on the Personal Protection Act, uh, which was enacted several years ago, which gives people in the uh, state of Wisconsin uh, the ability to secure a permit and then go armed with a, uh, a concealed weapon. I'm going to ask them to add an amendment that when a person who is involved in this sort of uh, self-defense act is cleared uh, that the firearm be returned to that person within 48 hours. And, you know, the reason I'm doing that is because they're actually, the, 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 the police, the, the, the government, uh, the state, if you will, is taking Andy's freedom away. They're taking his freedom of choice to be able to defend himself in that fashion uh, by taking his firearm. Now, some people have, you know, several firearms, and, and that's okay, but not everybody does. And not everybody has the means with which to go out and immediately buy another one. You know, the process it takes to buy a firearm anyway with the waiting period and, you know, the background checks, so on and so forth. So now he's standing out there unprotected. He still has to run his establishment. The bar is back open for business. That same thing could happen tonight. That's what I said yesterday. Hold-up men could come in here, and now Andy Kachansky cannot defend himself and other people who might be in his establishment and that is a problem. I have a huge problem with the government taking people's ability away to exercise their right of self-defense. Uh, and, you know, Sheriff, I, I, I know that that's why you've got a, a lot of supporters in the state of Wisconsin, um, including, by the way, uh, the folks who showed up for this uh, concealed carry course that you held over the weekend. How many folks actually took part in this? Uh, there were a couple hundred. It was overwhelming. Uh, there were people who had to stand during the four-hour uh, uh, firearm safety course that's required in order to uh, get your concealed carry permit in the state of Wisconsin. So some people had to stand, but they felt it was worth it. It was also a show of support, I think, uh, for the actions of uh, Andy Kachansky, the courageous bar owner. And I also think it says a lot about the people of, of Milwaukee County who've had enough. They're, 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 they're tired of, of always being on the... Uh, trembling end of, of these would-be criminals. You know, I did a uh, personal defense ad uh, sometime earlier this year. You may have heard it. It went, uh, it went viral, and it, it talked about ways that people could defend themselves, and that's because I got tired of seeing law-abiding citizens, people who have the means, who own guns, who own firearms, and whether they're in their home or out on the street, 
they weren't able to defend themselves. But now that the state of Wisconsin allows that, I think that, that people like myself have a duty and an obligation to back those individuals when they're in these in these situations. And I don't tell citizens what to do in those situations. I don't allow people to come up to me and say, Sheriff, what should I do if? I always say that's the choice you have to make based on the circumstances that you're presented with at that time. It's not easy for me to say what you should do. Sometimes it is better to just kind of, you know, give up your wallet, give up your money, whatever. Sometimes that's a smart thing to do. But sometimes the only thing that you can do is to take your firearm, aim center mass, and defeat that threat. And so when that happens, like it did with Andy Kachansky, people like myself and others, and unfortunately I'm one of the few public officials in the Milwaukee area uh, that have been doing this, but we need to, to, to let those folks know that we're there to support them, we have their back, we'll, we'll walk them through this whole process so that they can resume uh, lives as a, as a responsible uh, citizen. And so when that many people showed up yesterday, that told me that this community is coming together and this community is saying loud and clear, we support the Second Amendment, we support our freedom to be able to defend ourselves and to to possess those weapons, whether it's in self-defense or not. It doesn't matter. It's none of my business. But they, I think they sent a, a huge message to the, the, the Milwaukee County um, elected officials anyway that this is a new day. We are in control of, of, of our lives. We're not going to depend on the government anymore when it comes to this. The police are overwhelmed uh, with the calls for service. We don't have enough police officers here to get to every call like Mr. Kachansky's. 911 is not always an option. It wasn't to Andy Kachansky that day. And so there are certain things that citizens, responsible citizens, law-abiding citizens can do. And I'm encouraging them, and I'm telling them, you have a duty to protect yourself and your family in those situations, but that you have to be prepared. You know, and, and I love the way you put it, Sheriff, uh, that you have a duty to protect. We, we, don't, we don't often hear about our, our, our duties. We hear about our rights. But, you know, when you put it that way, that you have a duty to protect those you love, you have a duty to protect yourself, you have a duty to stand up to these violent criminals, because otherwise— the problem just gets worse and worse. It's, I mean, it sounds like that message is really, really resonating. It is, and that's been a problem uh, in terms of the anti-gun uh, movement here, the anti-Second Amendment. They have thrown uh, every resource they have to destroy my message of personal uh, responsibility, of individual responsibility, of freedom, of choice, and of liberty, and of of uh, self-determination, my message of um, relying on yourself first. And uh, they're doing that because it's a common-sense message. More people are starting to get it. They say, hey, yeah, this has always been our responsibility, but we got away from it. We relied too much on the government, through the police, but now the police are overwhelmed. And so since the anti-gun movement, of which Mayor Tom Barrett in the city of Milwaukee claims to be one of the co-founders of, along with Mayor Bloomberg from out in New York, that's what I'm up against now. But I'm here to tell you, Cam, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm a fighter. I got big shoulders, and I will fight with every breath I have as long as I'm the sheriff of Milwaukee County and even after that to make sure the people of my county can exercise um, uh, their constitutional rights, one of which I think is the most fundamental one because it, it, it prevents tyranny, that being the Second Amendment. And this is always going to be a fight. And we're going to have to show the resolve. And I have to have the support of the people that showed up yesterday. That's what they said to me. Hey, we're with you, Sheriff. Here's your fighting force. Mm -hmm. And so it gives me more confidence and it gives me more determination to keep fighting this anti-gun movement that exists here in Milwaukee County. You know, uh, talk about the, the, the strength of that movement. I mean, I, as you say, the strength of the, the, uh, the, the, the pro-freedom movement um, relies on the activism. It relies on people getting up off the couch and, and, and getting out the door, or at least, you know, able to send emails and phone calls, but, 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 but working to protect and preserve and strengthen their rights. Uh, compared to, you know, 10 years ago when you all were fighting for the right to carry uh, in the state of Wisconsin, wh where do you see the, uh, the, 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 the anti-gun movement in your state right now, Sheriff? Uh, well, it's strong, and, and, and it, it's, you know, it's a part of their platform. 
uh, the left mainly. But although I, I say this, there's a lot of people on the left who are gun owners. Yep. There are a lot of people on the left who who believe in wholeheartedly the Second Amendment and want to protect it. So I'm not painting this broad brush. But the anti-gun movement, for the most part, exists on the left. They're well-funded. They have a lot of resources. And if they have to, they'll go national to bring resources in to fight these fights. That's what they did in the state legislature uh, before Wisconsin passed the uh, Personal Protection Act and Castle Doctrine. Uh, Castle Doctrine flipped the equation. Uh, Castle Doctrine, as you might know, is uh, when you're inside your home and an intruder comes in, you have a right to use any force up to including deadly force. And when that situation is over, the homeowner no, no longer has to prove that what he did was reasonable. The you know, dead guy is going to be kind of hard for him if he's dead, but he's automatically presumed to be in the wrong. Whereas before, if a homeowner used deadly force on an intruder, the homeowner had to hire a lawyer and go through this potential criminal process and prove that what he or she did was reasonable. Well, that's been flipped. So we now have leverage, but the left uh, continues to fight. They always will. You look at what they did after Sandy Hook. You look what they did with Trayvon Martin. They turn those things around, and they use it as a, a to motiv- uh, motivate their own base into more gun control when those issues had nothing to do with gun control. So it's the thing that I, I stress to the people of Milwaukee County, and I will to your listeners as well, because it's, it's happening all across the United States. This fight for to preserve our Second Amendment rights is never going to go away. It's never going to go away. So I, I warn people, don't get lulled into this false sense because the left isn't out there actively trying to enact gun control laws, because they do it under the surface, and then they wait for an opportunity, like a Sandy Hook, they wait for an opportunity like Trayvon Martin, and then they, they, they rise to the occasion and try to use that to pressure lawmakers and to play on their emotions. And they use people like the parents of the Sandy Hook uh, children. And I thought that was I thought that was a sin, that they use the emotion of those people to try to further their own agenda, which is to somehow, and it's not going to happen, but somehow uh, nullify the, the Second Amendment with, uh, uh, laws and, and, and rules within states that have not passed any sort of, of court test and never will. But, it, you know, it, it, it's designed, Cam, to frustrate us. It's designed to frustrate people like you, people like your members uh, with the NRA, people like myself, and I'm a member of the NRA, by the way. But it's used to frustrate, uh, frustrate us into at one day just saying, oh, the heck with it, we're tired of fighting, it's not worth it anymore. Mm-hmm. So we cannot give up the fight. Absolutely. And Sheriff... As always, sir, it is so good talking to you. Please keep up what you're doing, and uh, you are welcome back anytime. You've got an open microphone. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Sheriff David Clark joins us from uh, Milwaukee County, Wisconsin.